WWE needed to set up more matches for Roadblock this Sunday, so what matches did they set up? We'll answer that as WGS TV reviews Monday Night Raw for the week of December 12, 2016. Hey YouTube, are you ready for your hot tag? Because we are is definitely time to work. Hi, this is the incomparable Lance Moss from YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV, and you're watching The Wrestle Game on WGS TV. What's up, guys? I'm the Russell Gamer. Welcome back to another episode of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer. And joining me on the Raw Review this week, ladies and gentlemen, you know him as our resident music mogul over on YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV, the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Now, there were two things that were left out of this week's Raw. On last week's show, it was advertised that Emmalina, Emma's new character, was supposed to make her debut last night, but for some reason, WWE decided to pull her instead, show another vignette, a picture saying the Emmalina makeover is premiering soon. So, the question now becomes, Lance, was last week's vignette a mistake when it advertised her as making her debut the following week? Honestly, I looked at her Twitter... It was not a mistake. They're basically not, doing what they do with the all red everything. Oh, she will not be here tonight. But they were screwing with us to say, "Oh, yo, we're all about the divas revolution or the four horsemen." Now I have your attention. Yeah. So whatever the real reason was for that, I guess who knows. And with this show being the go-home show, and one of your bigger matches of the card for Roadblock is the 30-minute Ironman match for the Raw Women's Championship, you would expect to see both Charlotte and Sasha Banks on there for one final build leading into the pay-per-view. But did that happen? No. Both Charlotte and Sasha were, weren't even there for Raw last night. It kind of leaves your head scratching, doesn't it, Lance? Yeah, I even, when we did the uh, Raw review on HWR, I even said my one big problem was where were probably much one of the biggest matches on the whole damn card. Yep. And they weren't even there, so it really doesn't make any sense. But um, anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about Raw. Open up this week with the Triple Threat Tag Team title match with the New Day defending against the teams of Cesaro and Sheamus and Luke Gallus and Carl Anderson. I have to say I was impressed with the overall match quality, but the real shining start of this match, Lance, undoubtedly was Cesaro. Yeah. Most I mean, I mean, look at all the stuff he did last night. It was just absolutely amazing, and he proved in this match that he is indeed an amazing talent within WWE and could be utilized so much better than what WWE is currently doing with him. Yeah, but see, the whole bullshit that he's... Oh, Vince McMahon thinks he can't grab the brass ring and yada yada yada. Bullshit. Yep. Seeing the New Day retain in this match really didn't surprise me, but... I think seeing uh, Stephanie McMahon getting doused head to toe in champagne by Xavier Woods was uh, indeed something to see. And remember what a Andy said last night during our, our hangout call, Lance, that he was disappointed that Stephanie had her coat on when she got I think wet. we all were, to be honest with you. Me, you, Rick, Steve, Andy, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> oh, man. Like I said, it was something worth seeing, guys and gals. Up next, it was Braun Strowman taking on Curtis Axel. This was just a straight-up squash match. Basically, Braun versus Mini Braun. You know, beard-on-beard -beard violence. Strowman cut a promo beard after the match. Beard-on-beard matter, too, damn it. <laughs> Strowman cut a promo after the match on how Zayn couldn't last two minutes with him. And after that, it was cut to the backstage with Zayn once again confronting Mick Foley, who somehow kept his teeth in his mouth over this and said that Since he didn't give him... If he didn't give him the match that he wanted, then he wanted to be traded to SmackDown Live, and Foley would then give his response later in the night. A lot of people at this point in time, Lance, were, were kind of speculating as to whether or not Sami Zayn would actually remain on Monday Night Raw. When we were watching it at this point in the show, do you think that WWE was using this to 
actually trade him to SmackDown Live? Honestly, the only way I could have seen it happen for a change would have been Ambrose so they could reunite the Shield. But I knew there was a, a very small chance of that happening. I knew so, it was because they didn't... With only having three matches announced, they needed that match to happen at Battle at Roadblock. At Roadblock. And we'll talk about how that was set up when we get to that point in the show. Up next, it was Arya Davari taking on Lince Dorado. You know, in the over 28 years I have been a wrestling fan, I have never seen anyone, whether it was in the WWF, WCW, NWA, AWA, WCCW, you name it, whatever. I have never seen anyone actually come out and announce that they were going to interfere in a match that is until last night with the extraordinary gentleman Jack Gallagher, which kind of signifies to me, Lance, that WWE is building up these their characters for this angle, possibly, if not tonight at 205 Live, then possibly at Roadblock this Sunday? Maybe, but it's a long shot. Now... I want people to know that I'm not saying this as a fact, but simply a possibility. If WWE doesn't do it tonight at 205 Live, which is the Cruiserweight show, yeah. then, then more than likely uh, it's going. it might happen at Roadblock because they got to have that, you know, even though it's like the start of a small angle between the two, they got to have it cultivate somewhere. And I, I would, one would think Roadblock would be the perfect place for these two. Uh, anyway, the Rollins report segment last night was kind of stale because, honestly, Lance, I'm not sold on Rollins be being uh, a talk show host like a Roddy Piper, a Chris Jericho, or a Miz. And, and, wait a minute, yeah, wait again, a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I'm you getting, just I'm getting, said that. Well, did you see him, uh, Mike Mizanin, on last week's Talking Smack? He was actually really good. But he As, is not the uh, main part of talk. It, talking smack. He cannot hold his own talk show. Well, I think I think it's all a matter of opinion, and that's what the show's all about: opinions. Uh, he would have uh, Kevin Owens come on and uh, as he announced that the New Day would be defending their tag team championship against himself and Chris Jericho. Jericho would then come out, and after a brief exchange with Owens, he would come down to the ring for a confrontation with Rollins, which led to Roman Reigns coming out to make the save to end the segment. And, and one had to figure at that point in time, Lance, that this was not the end of the night for Rollins and Reigns, but not by a long shot. Hell no. No damn way. Up, up next, it was the Brian Kendrick taking on TJ Perkins, and it was announced during this match that at Roadblock, Rich Swan will be defending the Cruiserweight Championship in a triple threat match against both Kendrick and Perkins at Roadblock. So there's another confirmed match for the show right there, Lance. So that makes four. Yeah, which with these two guys, that's the one reason I don't think we're going to see the pale rider or the pale gentleman, what the hell ever, and that other dude for Roadblock. I think... They normally don't, if they have like specialty divisions, they don't do two specialty division matches at a pay per view. Is the one where I don't think that uh, the pale gentleman or what the hell ever his name is, and that other dude. Extra extraordinary gentleman Jack Gallagher? Yeah, the pale gentleman Jack Gallagher. <laughs> now, as far as this match goes with Kendrick and Perkins. They have worked some good matches before, and this one was another good one from them, but I think one spot definitely worth mentioning, Lance, the clothesline spot that sent Kendrick to the outside where Kendrick caught his head on the apron on the way down. That looked downright nasty. Yeah, he got his bell wrong. But he still finished the match. Yeah, that is true. Because the finish of the match was Kendrick hitting sliced bread on Perkins to pick up the win. Now... Up next, we had a rematch from last week as Bailey took on Alicia Fox. I believe this was over the fact that Alicia believed that Bailey was hitting on Cedric Alexander by giving him a teddy bear or something to that extent. I tend to ignore that kind of crap like that, to be honest. Uh, the match was decent, really nothing bad to see here. The finish of the match 
It was Bailey hitting the Bailey to Belly on Alicia to pick up the win. And you know, Lance, I said it last week to Bailey that I'm a very patient man and I'm willing to wait to get a hug from her. Yeah, me too. Now, as far as the next segment goes, the first thing I want to say is that Lana looks hot in anything. Even military camouflage. Yeah. After showing that hotel beatdown, Big Cass came down to confront Rusev, and after the confrontation, it was announced that Rusev will take on Big Cass on the kickoff show, so we have yet another confirmed match for this Sunday, Lance, even though it's not on the main card, it's on the kickoff. I disagree with the placement. You believe Be it should be on the main card? Yes, because... They have stuff they they threw together for the main card, but some they have at least what a good three or four weeks in. I mean, what when the hell did Enzo do the uh, the fake na naked walk? Two three weeks ago, something like that. Something like that. And though and they actually have a little bit of build behind that one, but uh, that's the that's the pre show. The hell. If anything, the way I would book it is I would take that match and put it on the main card and the matchup yeah. that we were talking about earlier with Gallagher and Davari. Yeah. That that match could be on the kickoff show. Yeah, but, definitely. Uh, but apparently WWE doesn't know what they're doing these days. But then again, we still watch the product, so I don't know what but, else to say about that. And let's face it, they have realized before, whoops, uh, this shouldn't be here. They have flip-flopped it even more day of. Yeah. Maybe they will do that. Up next, it was Sami Zayn taking on Jinder Mahal. This, too, was just a straight-up squash match with Zayn hitting the Haluva kick on Mahal to pick up the win. Uh, Foley would then come out next and announce to everyone that he was trading Zayn to SmackDown Live for someone of equal talent. My first horrifying thought about that, Lance, was the no chin Magoo wonder James Ellsworth. But it was worse. Eva Marie. If anyone out there actually thinks that Eva frickin' Marie is on the same level as a Sami Zayn, then you need to have your head thoroughly examined. Now, this fired up Zayn, which led to the actual match against Strowman being made for Roblox. So now, technically, we have five confirmed matches for this Sunday. Don't forget to check out Sports Entertainment tonight, this Thursday, for the Roadblock Prediction Show, where you can call in with your predictions for Roadblock End of the Line. That's this Thursday at 9 p.m. Central Time. And also, uh, don't forget to check us out Sunday on this same channel when we do the live reaction. Yep, so that way you can just tune out Michael Cole on commentary and just listen to good commentary. Now, since the wet Stephanie McMahon put Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, I'm glad they showed yeah. a replay of that. They actually showed a replay of that. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure they had it on the network YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. So since she put C C Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho in the tag team title match against the New Day, Mick Foley would do the same by putting Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins into the match, making it a triple threat match. Now, honestly, Lance, I have I, I gotta be honest. When I saw that happen, I was starting to have some doubt as to whether or not New Day were keeping the titles and breaking Demolition's record. Honestly, because of the legal battle that's been going on between Demolition and the WWE, I knew it was going. Because if some, if there is a legal battle between you and the WWE, and you hold a record, that record's going. That's just how they work. I mean, hell. Look at yeah. AJ Lee. Yeah, definitely. Now, as far as overall match quality, it was amazing and a great main event for Monday Night Raw. One spot to bring up uh, here, Lance, is when I saw Owens getting pushed into Jericho, who was making a pin, yeah. I just knew, I knew right then and there it was going to turn violent with Owens and Jericho. Yeah. Yeah, my, so it was just kind of obvious right there. Yeah, my favorite spot of the whole match was that Tower of Doom out of the corner. Yeah, that double Tower of Doom. Basically, everybody just went down. I'm trying to remember. I think it was Woods and Rollins. Yeah, got the brunt of it. Yeah, because they were doing the suplex. 
Um, I know Big E and Roman Reigns were doing the power bomb, but who, who was doing the suplexing on e on each side? Because I, I know it's Rollins and Woods taking the suplex, but who was giving the suplexes? I'm trying to remember who it was. I think. Anyway, it, it, it matters not, to, to be honest. Uh, I got to say, the finish of the match was Rollins hitting the pedigree on Chris Jericho, but got pulled out of, out of the ring by Big E, which allowed Woods to drape his arm over Jericho to pick up the win and retain the championships, thus breaking Demolition's record. Yeah. Now, after the match was over, Jericho and Owens would have a confrontation, which led to Jericho seeing Reigns readying up for the spear, and instead of warning Owens... Jericho just walked out of the ring, leaving the Universal Champion to eat the spear from the United States Champion. Lance, if we see Kevin Owens retain the Universal Championship, what are the chances of Owens and Jericho happening at the Rumble? It has to. For one reason. After that, Jericho ain't going to be around because he I think he leaves on tour with Fozzy in February, I believe. Overall score on Raw this week gets a 3 out of 5 with best match of the night going to the main event. With worst match of the night, I have to be honestly, honestly going to Strowman and Axel. Because it was just a squash match and not, honestly I wasn't interested in it. Um, Lance, um, over to you, your overall scores and your picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week. Um, yeah, overall 3.3 3 out of 5 and it should have best match, I'm going to go best segment with, well, everybody likes seeing a good-looking woman getting all wet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I said, um, I'm pretty sure Triple H had his nose stuck to the TV at the screen at that point in time. Hell, he was but, uh, backstage like, come to come to <laughs> Because he is good working gorilla, so. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, guys and gals, what we, what we want to know from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week. What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week? Definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. If you guys like this video, be sure you slam that like button like a champ. Lance, what can fans expect to see when they come visit your channel over on YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV? Well, I got uh, album reviews, NASCAR discussion videos, Redneck Golden Cooking videos, musical equipment reviews, musical equipment builds, and every Wednesday I go live with Lance Moss TV in France and never know who's going to show up. So instead of watching kind of a eh, tribute to the troops, come on over and hang out with us and shoot shit. Or if you want to watch better wrestling, just watch NXT. That's all I'm going to say. Um, don't forget to check out Sports Entertainment tonight, this Thursday night, 9 p.m. Central Time, for the Roadblock Prediction Show. Once again, if you guys want to call in or get into the chat with your predictions of WWE Roadblock, this Thursday at 9 p.m. Central Time is the time to do it. And also, guys, if you want to see more wrestling talk with awesome gameplays, you know the way to do it. you got to hit that subscribe button down below. So with that being said, for the incomparable Lance Moss of Lance Moss TV, I'm your friendly neighborhood Russell Gamer, and I will see you next time right here on WGS TV. Bye, guys! Later.